I've been editing a lot of my students' papers these days, and I find myself still confused about the best word to use in the best situation. Even as a native speaker, I need help. So I want to show you the tool which I use to determine best word combinations. There's something called Ngram Viewer by Google. You can just do a search for that Ngram Viewer. Google right here, Google Ngram Viewer. There's the website address if you need it. Well, it shows you what people are writing about. They have digitized so many books and made them searchable. So we can see that more people write about Frankenstein than Albert Einstein. All right, um, let's take a more concrete example for you scientists. Let's search for tuberculosis and malaria. All right, well, we can see that people talk about tuberculosis quite a lot more, especially around World War II, I'm sorry, around World War I and World War II compared to malaria. Now, you need more data to show whether tuberculosis is more serious than malaria, but with other things in the English language, this is the data itself. So let's see if people use walk slow or walk slowly more. Well, it's very clear now that walk slowly is the winner. So if we were in the in writing in 1813, I suppose the difference between walk slowly and walk slow was very small. And it's hard to say that walk slow would be incorrect at that time because language is made true by the people who use it. So the data on amount is enough data to prove that something is good. That's the nice thing about language in comparison with science. Let's look at a few specific examples. Well, one of my students produced a sentence that said, some disease is endemic in Asia. And I thought for a minute that is okay, but maybe endemic to Asia is better, I thought. So I put it in here and did a search. Oh, well, it looks like my student was correct and I was wrong. Now, I suppose we don't actually need to go back so far to get the idea. As we already saw, people had different ideas in the 1800s. It's probably fair to just search from 1950 to 2000. Okay, that's much clearer. Well, we can see that endemic in Asia really is preferable to endemic to Asia. But I'm not giving up yet. Maybe, just maybe this is an Asian thing. So let's just really confirm that in is better than to by checking for Europe. Indeed, in is better, so it's fair to say that my student beat me on this one. However, the degree to which they are different is not that much. It, endemic in is roughly twice as common as endemic to. So if you are writing a paper and you write endemic to Europe or endemic to Asia, I suppose it's not that bad compared to in probably nobody is going to give you a hard time. By the way, this thing that says smoothing means there's an average. So even though the data here shows for 1967, it's actually averaged over the three years before and after 1967. It's good to do that in most cases because let's say we go to a smoothing of zero, which means the data is true for each point, and uh, it's more accurate, yes, but it's a bit harder to see the trend. In 1958, it was better to say endemic to Europe for some reason. Again, in 
1983, two was the winner. And uh, it was a tie in 1989. But really, we need a trend. If you want to see the total trend, you can actually go to a smoothing of 50, which is just the 50-year average, if you want to get a graph like that. But I'd say that the default of three is good enough for most of what you need to do. Now, actually, there's an easier way to do this. Let me show you the wildcard function. All right. Maybe there's something better than in or two. So rather than saying in Europe, I'm just going to use the asterisk. Endemic space, asterisk space, Europe. Let's see what that gives us. Well, all right. Well, we have another choice. We have throughout. Now, notice that there's nothing else on here. So there is no other good way to say this, or else the top 10 results should come up on here. Here's another thing that came up for me. My student produced a sentence that said, information of the European strain. Let's just take off strain. So she said information of the strain. Let me try that way. Now let me say to people who learn in English, even for a native speaker, these little words are hard for us. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use the wild card because information of the strain just didn't sound very good to me. So here we go. The best results come up. Information about the strain. Who is the recent winner? Or information on the strain. Now, so for those of you worrying about the difference between information about or information on, perhaps there is almost no difference because there are no other options. And these are roughly similar throughout the, the years. Let's just do a 50 year average just to find out. Okay, so information on is better, but the difference is really not so significant. Let's go to a little bit more advanced function. I often hear my students talking about using PCRs. You guys know what I'm talking about. They love to do PCR for things. But what, what should we say? Do we say you do a PCR? Is that right? Uh, I have heard variously students say perform a PCR or carry out a PCR. I have even heard someone use PCR as a verb. They said, well, you PCR this and then you get your results. Really, what is the best verb for PCR? So here's something we can do. We'll use our wildcard asterisk and then we can use uh, underbar verb. All right, and let's do ah, uh, because I think ah uh is going to be more appropriate. So what verb is best to use for PCR? Oops, we've got it on the 50 year average still. I want to use three. But anyway, you saw the results. So using a PCR or is a PCR. I see. Developed, prepare, used, use, using. Okay, so it seems to be obvious that use is the best one. You know, we do have developed and develop, although uh, the difference, there is a difference, of course, between describe, develop, generate, and use. There's a different quality between these verbs. However, the difference between use and perform, I would say, is relatively slight. So there we go. Use a PCR is, well, less than twice as common as perform. So I suppose perform is all right to use just for fun. Let's see what we get for carry out a PCR. All right, it's about the same as perform. So anyway, all of those should be acceptable, but use seems to be the most acceptable. All right, let's look at another function that we can do. I'm very interested in which adjective is best to use for treatment. Now, the reason is 
I heard alternately effective treatment and efficient treatment. All right, so I'm gonna write here efficient, comma, oh, if I could spell it correctly, efficient, and I'm using this equal sign with the arrow bar for a very specific reason. I'm not really just interested in what comes before treatment. You know, you might say the treatment is efficient or it is an efficient treatment. If we use the equal sign plus this, you know, this arrow bar, it's going to include all of that. So what kind of treatment would be the most effective? See, Google can understand that that effective is talking about treatment. So this is a very useful tool for identifying larger trends. All right, so go ahead and take your vote. Which do you think is more common? Okay, I thought so. Effective treatment is much more common. Uh, yes, very much more common than efficient treatment. Now, of course, the uh, meaning is slightly different. The efficient and effective aren't really the same words. So just to see if there are any other very useful adjectives to go with treatment, because you know we end up saying effective treatment all the time, is there anything else we can do? So we use our, our asterisk for the wildcard again and type in adjective. Well, so medical treatment special treatment, preferential treatment, equal treatment, there's effective. Okay, well, special, preferential, and equal treatment sound to me more like the social sciences. I'm interested more in the physical sciences for the moment, surgical, such treatment, same treatment, ill treatment, further treatment. Well, for what we're looking for, it seems like effective is one of the most used adjectives to modify the word treatment. So I suppose if we keep on saying effective treatment, it's not such a bad thing. Let's look at the final thing that I'm interested in. This one is uh, the, about the Western blot. All right, I also had a discussion with my student. Should Western blot be capitalized or not capitalized? Now this is by default case sensitive. I don't want to click this, right? Because I am interested in the difference between lower case and upper case. So let's see what we get. Okay, by far, Western blot with a capital is preferable to lower case Western blot. However, I'm concerned because what if Western blot is the start of a sentence? We don't know how often this is the start of the sentence or it's capitalized because it should be capitalized. So we need to make the search a little bit more specific. And here's how we can do it. We're going to search for a capitalized Western blot minus Make a space, very important to have a space. Start, and then is there a space here? I think there's no space. Western blot, okay. Oop, I almost forgot to put in the parentheses. All right, so now what we've done is to, ah, also I forgot to put a space here. Very important that you type this correctly. So now what I will get is a graph of Western blot with a capital W minus any Western blot with a capital that happens to be at the start of a sentence. Let's see what we get. Okay, well, I did this wrong because I didn't put a space here. Let's try that again. Well, okay, there we go. So still, even if we subtract all of those Western blots which start a sentence, Capitalized Western block is, oh, what is that? Uh, 
seven or eight times more used than lowercase western blot. Okay, good to know. So from now on, I will advise my students to use uppercase western blot. So I encourage you to take a look at this ingram viewers power. Ingram viewers power. You can go to this down at the bottom about ingram viewer and they have all sorts of different ways you can use it. Um, really quite powerful, and you can get really creative in your usage. So, please take a look and develop your English to be more effective. Thanks a lot.